Uh, the gentleman yields back. Uh, the chair now claims uh, uh, his own five minutes uh, to, to uh, uh, sum up the, the concerns I have with all of this checking that you keep assuring us it, it is so rigorous. Um, your ORR director, Dun Marcos, told the committee that um, HHS routinely contacts foreign consulates or embassies in order to verify UAC's documents. Um, is that correct? We work with the consulate offices, Mr. Chairman, to try to... Uh, you, you, you verify the information of, uh, of these children with the, with the consulate. When you're doing that, do you ever ask for the uh, child's uh, criminal history? We again, continue. we're talking about adolescents here, and sometimes adults pretending to be teenage, or pretending to be uh, uh, adolescents. As I've said before, Mr. Chairman, we're not a law enforcement agency. We're not an immigration agency. No, you're a placement we're agency. You're placing these children in what you keep assuring us are carefully vetted uh, homes, uh, and and yet, uh, uh, according to your own ORR director, uh, admitting to this committee in a transcribed interview, that when HHS contacts the consulate to verify information on the UAC, they do not ask for any criminal background information on that UAC. So they don't know if it's a gang member and they don't ask. Why would she tell us this? Congressman, we go through a vetting process to ensure that we can make uh, know who you, the you child is yeah, and then yes, for the placement. Of course, uh, that's what she testified. But then she also testified that you specifically do not inquire into the criminal background of these individuals who are 17 years old and sometimes older and pretending to be 17 with gang tattoos, with gang affiliations, and you don't, while you've got them on the phone and you are verifying information on that UAC, you don't bother to ask, oh, by the way, is, is this an MS-13 gang member? Does this individual have a criminal history? And then you place them in foster homes you release them into our communities, and there are some cases, tragic cases, where they go on to murder innocent Americans like Kayla Hamilton. Mr. Tiffany asked you, is there anything you do differently looking back on these past four years? Um, is there anything you do differently in the Kayla Hamilton case? Mr. Chairman, we work closely with the Department of Homeland Security, which does the vetting for these children when they first enter into the, the country. You're placing them. You're, you're the ones that are placing them in people's homes, and you're the one who's telling me, don't worry about it. They're all carefully vetted. Uh, they're all secure. Don't worry that we can't reach them by phone after we've, we've placed them in these homes. It might be they just weren't paying attention to the phone. Do, do, do you understand how this, th th this, do you, do you understand how this affects the lives of, of, of a population that you've placed that's approaching the size of the state of Wyoming? Some of them innocent, defenseless children. Others, gang members who are 17 years old or even older pretending to be 17. And you're in charge of all of this. And you can't tell us if there's anything you'd even do differently after four years of this nightmare that has unfolded, not only for our country, but for these children and their families. What do you have to say for yourself, Mr. Secretary? This is the end of this administration. It's the end of your tenure. What do you have to say for yourself? Because the words that keep haunting me are, are those that Cromwell spoke to the long parliament. You have sat here too long for any good you have been doing. It is not fit that you should sit here any longer. You shall now give way to better men. Now depart and go, I say, in the name of God, go. Chairman, if uh, you will allow me then to respond. Uh, we work closely with various agencies. In, in the case of the vetting of the child, it is the Department of Homeland Security that does the initial vetting because they're the ones that have custody of that child once the child is in the U.S. The Department of Homeland Security is the agency that then goes through that process of trying to determine who this child is, including those issues that you've mentioned with regard to any past criminal conduct. When we receive the children, we, uh, Department of Homeland Security shares with us the information they have compiled on that child. From there, what we try to do 
is make sure we care for the child and in the process of trying to find them a sponsor where they can live in a community, we go through the vetting of the individual uh, potential sponsor. Mr. Secretary, when the history of this administration is written, I would not want to be you looking back on what historians say about your tenure. I'm sorry, but that's the fact. 